All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our webinar tonight. I'm really excited for this. My co-host Natalie and I have been prepping um, for a while. You know, we've been really excited to bring you guys this content around this topic of how to live your healthiest life. And that's a big concept, right? But what we're going to do tonight is just share a little bit of our personal perspectives of how we have made health a part of our life for years up until this point and how we know that it's going to be part of our life indefinitely going forward. And health does not mean perfect. So you're not going to hear tonight specific nutrition tips because I think nutrition is very individualized. You're not going to hear uh, insane claims about how to lose 10 pounds in two hours, right? It's nothing like that. It's more about how you live your life and the choices that you make on a daily basis. So I just wanted to share a little bit of an agenda, but first, some of you guys are coming to us from the free gut health week that we had last week, which was awesome. And we shared a bunch of healthy gut recipes and we did a little giveaway last week. I said I would announce the winner tonight on the call. So if you had participated in our free challenge last week, you got into the running to get a gut protocol cookbook, which is a really great eating plan that's been working for a lot of people. So drum roll, we have our winner. If you weren't on, don't worry about it. But if we have our winner here from the gut group and it is Kaya Cuts. So Kaya, congratulations. Uh, I think Natalie is who you know in that group. So reach out to her and just send her your address and we will get you that cookbook. So super excited for you. That's an amazing cookbook. And some of you are coming from our community groups already. So if you're in my community group for health and wellness accountability, you get some bonus points for being here. So just know at the end of the meeting, I will show you guys how to ensure that you get those bonus points. I think those are my only housekeeping things. So I want to go forward with the call. I just wanted to introduce myself and let you guys know what to expect tonight. We love interaction first off. So anything you can drop in the chat, congrats to Kaya for the cookbook, anything at all as Natalie or myself or our special guest is going to share at the end please drop the chat and be happy with be like finger happy because we love hearing you guys in the chat. Uh, my name is Ashley Howard. If you don't know me, I am a health and wellness accountability coach. I have been in the health and wellness industry coaching for 10 years, but in the fitness industry for, I don't want to age myself, but 18 years. Um, it's just been such an amazing ride to get started with health and fitness and see where it has brought me today. I'm a wife and a mom and I live in South Carolina and I'm really excited to share with you guys tonight. So first I'm going to have my co-host Natalie introduce herself and share her tips and then I will share mine. And then we have a special guest at the end to wrap this up for us as well. So I think that's it for me, Natalie, I'm going to toss it over to you and I'm so excited to hear what you have to say. Thank you, Ashley. You guys, we are so excited to share with you today. And like Ashley said, we've been prepping for a while for the um, kind of doing it different than we do it. Uh, we've done it in the past because we want to bring value to you. We want to inspire you. We want to excite you. And we want you to know that the best life that you've ever dreamed of is, is there for you. And it's not as far away as it maybe may seem, right? Sometimes when we're thinking about these big goals, it seems like oh man, it's so far away. I just want to get up 10 minutes earlier or I want to eat one healthy meal. And we're here to share with you how to create little steps every single day that can create great habits for long-term success, right? Because we want to make change long-term. But before I go into my story, um, I just want to get everyone feeling good and excited. So if you guys can in the chat, um, we want to hear from you one thing that you're proud of yourself for doing today. This does not need to be health and fitness related. It's something that you are so proud of yourself for accomplishing or doing today. Um, so I'll give you guys a couple seconds to do that. And I'm going to read some of them in the chat because I think it's powerful that we start this call off everyone feeling empowered for each other and proud of each other. So if you guys could throw it in the chat, um, I will wait a couple seconds here. Keeping my house clean. Yes, <laughs> that's always a win. Making time for this call. Put up my fall decorations, getting in my cardio workout at 545. I'm proud of myself for starting in week two of my program. Yes, Taylor. Went on a walk, getting some major strategy work done. Got up early to work out, walking my dogs. I ran an amazing meeting um, regarding a difficult student. It was awesome. Made time to meet a friend. Figured out how to get in my first Zoom meeting. Yes, Linda. <laughs> um Let's see here. Actually got up at 3.30 to work out um, after not sleeping good. Awesome. Trying a new healthy recipe tonight. Okay, you guys, those are all amazing things. Like 
how freaking exciting I'm reading these. I'm like, yes, this is awesome. Like first time getting in the Zoom, like Zoom can be hard sometimes. So um, that is amazing. So I just wanted to do that activity quickly, um, keeping up with a workout routine consistently for three months, Sarah, so cool. Um, so just wanted to kind of start on a positive note before I kind of go into my story and where I started six years ago, where I am today. And in my story, I'm just at a timer because sometimes I like really talk, but I'm going to share my story with you guys. And in that story, there's probably a lot of different areas, whether it was me six years ago, me a year ago, or me now that you guys might be able to relate to and connect to a little bit. And I think it's powerful. And I'll kind of have you guys engage a little bit while I share this. But also, I'm going to give some tips and tricks and things that I have personally done that have helped me long term. So I'm going to start my timer. <laughs> um, so I am Natalie. I have been um, in this community. I've been a partner with Body since 2017, which is crazy because that was so long ago, it seems like. Um, but when I came in to this amazing community, I was lost with purpose. Okay. Like I had no idea what my purpose was. I had no idea what I was doing for myself outside of like the grind of work. So let's rewind to 2017, right? So I'm working full, full time. So like 60 to 70 hours a week sometimes, and sometimes not even having time to like eat dinner before bed because I'm getting home at 10 or 11, like getting fast food on the drive home, um, waking up, commuting out the door, like running out the door, commuting, rinse, repeat, Netflix, the couch, too many beers, like chips for dinner, just like bad habits, right? Because I was so consumed in my job and I was working all the time. Not that it was bad that I was working all the time. I just kind of lost track of me as an individual and me as like, what actually excites me? Like I'm making good money at my job. I don't dislike what I'm doing necessarily, but I'm always working. And then on the weekends, I'm like really like going out and partying and like, to be frank, getting too drunk and then being hung over for a week and just not, not serving myself. Right. That's not, that wasn't serving me well. And so I was kind of like lost like on paper. I'm sorry, you guys, I told my husband not to call me during this call <laughs> on his way home from golf men. Right. Okay. So, um, so I'm kind of going through the motions of life, right? I'm trying to figure out like, what the heck am I doing here? Like, is this going to be my future? Am I going to be waking up, going out the door, commuting, working 10 to 12 hour days, coming home, sitting on the couch, Netflix, repeat all that. Like, is that my life? Like, I think there's more to life than that. And I don't know how to find it on paper. Everything seemed really good, right? Like I had just bought a house. I had a dog at the time, my boyfriend, my husband now, um, things were great. Like everything looked really good on paper. Financially, we were really stable. Like we could travel. And I remember saying to him, like, I just feel stuck. Like I'm unfulfilled. I'm drained at work. Like, how do I get out of this like feeling? Right. And so I wasn't really taking care of myself. I had always been like a gym girl. So I always did like orange theory or kickboxing or the next gym or the next gym, because I thought you had to work out at a gym to get incredible results. And I was following someone on Instagram and crazy me already working 70 hours a week. I'm watching this girl and I'm also thinking she's a crazy person because I'm like, this girl is like really excited and happy and energized. And she's an accountant. She works full time and she's doing all this stuff. I'm like, how is she doing all this stuff? Right. And so I watched her and I watched her and I watched her and I was like, I'm really intimidated by her, but I can't stop watching her. Right. I'm really, really intrigued on what she's doing because she's talking about community. She's talking about having something for herself outside of her job. She's talking also, so she's making money. I don't know how the heck she's making money, but she's very happy. <laughs> she's working out. She's got a community. She's talking about friendships and traveling and all these things. And I was like, this girl has something that I want. Like, I don't even know what she's doing, but I feel like I need her energy, right? And so has anyone ever felt that way? Like, you're going through the seasons of your life and you're like, what am I doing today? Like, like I see people nodding their heads. Like, what is my purpose? Like, yes, I'm working. Yes, I have kids. Yes, I'm going to play with the dog later. But like, what about me? What about me? And like, there's people in the chat. Absolutely me. And a lot of people feel that way. It's just like, we go through life and we forget about ourselves, right? Because we're like checking in with the job or checking in with the kids. Husband's calling in the middle of a call. Like there's always something going on that is about everyone else. And so when I recognize that moment of like, I really need something for me. This girl has something for her. I can feel her energy through this phone. Like that's insane. So I reached out to her. Um, Beth said stuck and drained most of the last 30 years. I see the end of the tunnel now. Yes. And there's an end of the tunnel, you guys. And we're here to tell you that. 
Um, absolutely connect to that. I love that. So I reached out to this stranger that I was creepily following on social media. And I was like, hi, Brittany, I'm Natalie. You have no idea who I am. Um, but I started following you because your boyfriend, Christian, used to work where I work and I'm creepy and I started following you. So Christian's cool. Like, I'm happy for you guys, but what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? And she kind of shared what she was doing. She said that she was working out from home, which I did recognize that. She said that she was kind of building a business on the side, but more so finding something for herself outside of her accounting job to make her feel purposeful outside of her job. And I was like, you literally just said the words that I said in my head that I was missing to my boyfriend at the time, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. And so I was like, how do I sign up for whatever you're doing? And like, that was it. And at the time, again, I was working all of those hours. So it was like, not like I had all this extra time, but I want to tell you guys how my habits changed immediately when I started this with this community. So, you know how I said, I would just get home from work and I would sit on the couch and I'd eat chips and I'd drink like three, two hearted and not feel good the next day. And then I would just eat more chips and then I, whatever. So it was like my habits, right? I got excited and energized. I was getting up at 5.30 in the morning to go to the gym again. And I hadn't done that in so long because I was so tired and I was, but I was making myself tired. Like the way I was thinking about myself and my attitude and my days, that was making me the most tired, right? So just simply joining this community and having this woman who's like doing things that I want to do immediately got me inspired and excited. And I got my butt out of bed at 5.30 and I got to the gym. And I felt amazing about that. And then when I got home from work, guess who didn't want to drink beer and eat chips? The girl who went to the gym this morning, right? So it was like, oh my gosh, like one day of just finding someone to like buddy up with who wants me to do well, really made an impact for me. So I was like kind of hooked on this, like, I was kind of like on a high of like, oh my gosh, this is like, I can see how this girl's happy. Like she's genuinely taking care of herself and she's having a good time. And she's building community of people that, that, you know, that you'd want to hang out with people that you want a vacation with. So I committed to a workout program from at home. And that was weird for me. But as I said, I was working all these hours. So I was like, I need to figure out how to not have to like wake up at 445 to drive to the gym. And I live in Michigan. So in the winter, you guys, like you got to start the car 30 minutes early to maybe like be able to get the ice off the car to get to the gym. And then you got to put your boots on and your jacket and then you're covered in snow. And then you have to go change and get all warmed up in the gym and then bundle up when you leave. It's like a whole process. I know Ashley's like not in her head because she's in the cell and she's like, nope, not a problem here. <laughs> um, but like, it was a whole process. So I was like, maybe I'll try working out at home. Right. And so I also was the girl who judged people that worked out at home. Like, I just didn't think you could get a good workout at home. Has anyone ever thought I'm never going to get a good workout in at home? I don't ever think that it's like, oh, and I, I'm going to be honest, like I'm a mom now. So I, I like understand like moms still do workouts that are like good workouts. But I used to think, oh, these are just like probably moms da dancing around and they're like 70s leggings, like not even getting a workout in. Like, that's what I thought. A lot of people are saying definitely me. Um, that's what I thought these home workouts were. And I was like, um, I did my first workout and my boyfriend at the time did it with me. And he's like, this is the hardest thing I've ever done. Like he was like, this is hard. And I was like, this is so good. And guess what happened? My body started to change. Like my little skinny fat composition that I had that was never changing because my beer and my chips and my bad attitude and my bad habits finally started changing. Right. Like I finally started like seeing some like positive shifts in my life. And I'm like, I'm kind of addicted to this feeling. So then I was like, I could build a business with this too, right? So then I was like, I can earn extra money by helping people feel the way I'm feeling right now. Like this is a actual no brainer, a no brainer for me. So I kind of dabbled and learned about the business. But the cool thing about the business for me is it really held me accountable because now I got to be that girl that Brittany was for me. I got, I get to be the girl that maybe fixes someone who feels a little broken and lost, Right. And who can't feel purposeful when you do that for someone being that person for someone is so powerful. And it's so much bigger than like, oh, I care what people think of me or I'm afraid to do this because of X, Y and Z. There was more purpose behind it. So that's kind of like how I came into all of this. Right. So I am now a stay at home mom. So I went from working all those hours um, and now I stay home with my daughter. So my daughter was born premature. Um, we had a pretty traumatic birth story. She is healthy and happy and beautiful. And I love her to death. Um, but I got to be bedside with her by her in her incubator in the NICU every single day. And it started from like changing my habits, right? It started for me 
showing up and pressing play in my living room, cutting out a couple of beers at night, um, getting excited, plugging into a community instead of like sitting and watching 12 hours of Netflix when I didn't really have 12, 12 hours to watch, you know? So these little habits evolved into this life-changing opportunity for me. Um, and I feel like for me personally, like that piece of it, like getting to be here with Kaylin is, is really powerful for me um, because I, I've always been the person who's worked all the time, right? I always thought you have to work, 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 work in order to, you know, trade your money or trade your time for money to get a paycheck. And then you, you hang out with your kids on the weekend. Well, I'm changing that narrative for my family and I get to do it in a way that feels really good. Right. And so for me now I'm, I'm pregnant with my second. So I'm 13 weeks pregnant. I'm having a boy this time, which I'm so excited for. And now I get to do it all over again and be here for all of these moments. Right. And I don't say that to brag at all. I say it to inspire you. Maybe you're a mom, right? All right. Is anyone in here moms? We have any moms on this call? Yep. Okay. So we're going to go into some mom things next. So if you're not a mom, this will still be relevant because time is important for everyone. But how hard is it if you are a mom, how hard is it to make time for yourself? Do you feel like you are the last person that is on the list? Like the, the kids are first, right? Whether your kids are two or 41 or 20 or six, right? Every day, always last, always last. And it's so hard to always be last, you guys. Sorry, I'm checking my timer here. Okay, we're good. It's so hard to always be last. And so for me, I'm going to kind of share quickly why I still prioritize my workouts as a stay-at-home mom to a two-year-old while I'm 13 weeks pregnant, tired as can be, exhausted from taking care of a toddler, not feeling the best. But I know for me, when I take care of myself first, it means I'm going to be the best mom for Kaylin all day long. And I know it sounds cliche and we all say like, fill your cup up first, but it's true that before, before, gosh, I think I, when I was eight, I was eight weeks pregnant. It's not that long ago. I was feeling super, super nauseous. I wasn't really waking up early. I was kind of in that like first trimester funk a little bit. And I was telling Ashley about it too. And I remembered it with, with Kaylin. And I was like, I've got to get up. I've got to get back to what I was doing before and make myself feel good so that I am not sick on the couch until 11 o'clock in the morning with my daughter. You know, all I'm doing is like putting on the TV, which you got to do what you got to do sometimes. But like, I was feeling bad about that. So for me personally, there's a deeper purpose for why I do my workouts. I do my workouts so I can be a good mom. And I had to recognize that my to-do list is going to be there regardless of what I do, in what order. The dishes, I promise, will still be waiting for you. Even when you finish a five minute walk, even when you walk to the driveway, or do a lap around your house or whatever you're going to do, go do 10 squats. The dishes I promise are going to be there for you. They're not going to miss you and you're not going to miss them, but they're going to be there. And I share that because I think sometimes we think we need to do the dishes. We need to prep dinner. We need to do this. We need to do this. I need to, um, I need to fold all the laundry. We do need to do those things. And, and every single person, I don't care how, what job you do, if you're a stay at home mom, if you work, if you're busy, if you're not busy, like we all have all the same things that we have to do as human beings to sustain life. Right. We have to eat. We have to clean. We have to take care of our kids. We have to do all those things. But you're important too. Why are we at the end of the list? So I challenge you to put yourself maybe in the middle. Maybe it's too hard to do it in the morning. Maybe you do it in the middle. Maybe you involve your kids. Something that I did for so long. Like I'm going to go back and make a slideshow of from when Kaylin was born. I took a selfie with her or a video every single day when we did our workout. And she loves it. She wakes up in the morning. She runs up to me and she starts doing squats. And she's like, get sad if I've already worked out. Because she knows that that's a part of our routine and she gets to be a part of that. So just know as a mom, it's not going to be perfect. Every day is going to be different. Every day is going to be a challenge, but you're worth it. And I promise you'll be a better mom. And that list isn't going to seem as daunting if you can find a way to put yourself first and find a way to do it with purpose. So do it for your kids. If you can't do it for yourself, do it for your kids. Do it for your, your grandkids. For me, I want to be that grandma that is like on the floor rolling around with my grandkids one day. And the only way that's going to happen is if I keep my booty moving, right? And and stay in good health and stay in good shape. And, and we can do that. And we just have to take baby steps to get there, right? So to kind of wrap this all up, um, of course, the building a business with this is really cool because we get to make this big impact. But the impact that it has really made is on my life my daughter's life, my future son's life, who is hearing me talk about this stuff all the time. So maybe he's already building some habits. I don't know how that works um, in there. But uh, my husband, everyone is benefiting from the habits that I have created from feeling like I was failing 
drowning, so stuck, never going to see the end, going to work 50 hours for the rest of my life, going to drink too much all the time. Like I changed as a person and it's because of this community and because of the little, little habits that I made because I was held accountable by other people. So your days may be crappy right now, but I promise you, if you take baby steps, they can get better. So that is all I have to share. Those are my tips kind of like weaved into my story. Um, so I hope that was helpful for you guys. I hope you guys took something away. Um, Ashley is going to take it away for us next, but I would love to see in the chat, maybe like your biggest takeaway or, or something that you, you want to implement right away from what I shared. I think that's all I have, Ashley. Oh my gosh, you guys, can you give her some love in the chat? That was amazing. What a cool way to hear your story and hear your tips too. And that's really what we wanted to bring to you guys. Like, first off, if you're not in our community, we want you to be here, right? And if you are in our community, we want you to link arms with us and help us on our mission to not only help ourselves, but help other people. Like straight up, that is what we want because that is how we have seen our lives drastically change. And that's just what we're so passionate about. But to hear how Natalie, like we have such similarities in our story, um, and to hear her share how she shifted, right? And I, I think it's so powerful. And what I'm going to share with you guys is I have four tips for you. And if you do have something to write with or write on, or if you happen to be on a computer and you can grab your phone, I'm going to ask you to get a little vulnerable. You don't have to share it in chat, but hopefully with me sharing some of my story, you guys will know that if you struggle with similar things, you're not alone, just like Natalie so humbly shared too. Like, I know we kind of show ourselves like, hey, I'm not perfect. Hey, a struggle, right? Like you might see a one version of us online and know that like we put ourselves out there because we want to encourage and inspire, but we all have our struggles. And so what I want to share with you guys is just four tips that I have found to be really, really helpful because I have gone through such a dramatic shift in the last 10 years. Yes, but most dramatically in the last uh, nine months. So I have been on my health and fitness journey for in this industry over a decade helping people. But prior to that, I had taught group exercise. I always joke that I was destined for fitness, like a life in fitness, because I was a 16 year old that stumbled into a step class with 40 year olds. Like I loved it. I was like there with all the moms. I was 16 in high school. I had stopped sports and I wanted to work out. So fitness to me was always kind of second nature. And I know that's not everyone's story, but that was my story so much so that I decided to teach group exercise when I was in college, I didn't go to school for fitness, but I got certified to teach classes and then taught classes after college, ended up moving. I left a corporate job in marketing to be with my now husband. We had a crazy adventure, um, wonderful years. And now we have two kids and we absolutely are settled where we are. We love it. But when I realized something, when I was teaching classes and I was sort of this fitness person that number one, I didn't know the first thing about nutrition. I really didn't. I grew up as a nineties kid where fast food, my single mom, you know, we would get fast food a couple of times a week and that was the best, but also I just didn't know how to take care of myself. Like I was such a kind of a walking, I don't want to use the word hypocrite, but I would teach a fitness class and then I would go hit up McDonald's on the way home. Like I just didn't understand how to take care of myself in a well-rounded sense of the word. I wasn't taught that, you know, my mom wasn't taught that and she couldn't teach it to me because you can't teach what you don't know. And so when I found a uh, body and when I found being able to, you know, have these health and fitness products at home, number one, I was skeptical because I was a group fitness instructor, but I was also just unsure of how to find any kind of balance in my life. I remember trying to do slim fast shakes and trying nothing against, well, actually, yeah, that's not a great product. And I'll say that, but I also remember trying to do these restrictive diets and I would be done by day three and I would go get a milkshake because I was, I did not like restriction so much. So I always thought that having healthy nutrition meant being super strict on a diet. And I just did not want to do that. And then when I started learning about well-roundedness and how to be healthy, being healthy didn't necessarily mean being restrictive, but being healthy meant having an open mind and starting to learn more about how foods make my body feel, how beverages make my body feel how workouts make my body feel, you know, before getting involved with this community, I was only someone who did cardio. Like I would go running. I don't know if anyone else can relate, but I would just do my cardio. I would never pick up a weight because I didn't want to get bulky. I don't know if any other women out there have had that misconception, but that was my experience with honestly with fitness, even though I would even teach some weightlifting classes, I would lift very light and I wouldn't touch them again until I would teach it again. 
So stumbling into this community over a decade ago, I really learned more about nutrition. I learned more about how to feel my body well. Um, and to say that the last, the next 10 years have been life-changing has really been an understatement. So I learned about how to use products and programs. Like I said, drinking a, a very nutrient dense shake. That was my breakfast or lunch when I would ru rush off to one of my three part-time jobs, working out with a DVD because what we use were DVDs back then. I know this is like the dark ages. I was starting to develop habits. And I share all that background because I need you guys to understand where I was coming from. But the biggest part of me was that I had this deep, dark secret that I had hid for many years and I struggled with alcohol. I had a drinking problem since I was a teenager. And I always call myself the most dangerous kind because I had it all together on the front side, right? Even over 10 years, I was building a business and I was drinking every single night. And to, to give you guys some perspective, I have been sober now for nine months. And on January 8th of this year, I finally came to my husband and I said, I need help. I need to stop because this is going to kill me. I've lost two members of my family, my both my brother and my father due to complications with addiction in the same year. And I was headed down that path just in a very more put together way. So I share that vulnerable side of me to let you guys know that number one, I was really good at hiding things, right? Because I was the fitness girl, but I had this deep, dark secret. And when I was finally ready to face that demon over the last nine months, my life has transformed. And maybe you don't have this, you've never had an issue like I've had, right? But I do believe we all have something that if we don't shine the light on it, it tends to eat us away a little bit more. And maybe that's food. And maybe that's anything else that a habit that is not serving you. So what I want to just share in these four brief tips is no matter what you're going through, or maybe when I just said that it triggered something else for you and that's okay. And you don't have to share that, but shining the light on something, even if it's just with yourself is a way that you can start to shift your life. So my first habit or my, sorry, my first tip is to think about habit swapping. So for me, again, it was at night, I have two young kids, beer or wine, that was my go-to, several on the weeknights, much more on the weekends, push through workouts the next day when I didn't feel well, because I would go to great lengths to cover up how not good I felt, because I didn't want anyone to question what I was doing. But I started when I was finally ready to make that decision to become sober, I needed a habit swap. Just like Natalie said, beer and chips, I totally feel you, right? But I needed something at night when that craving hit. And maybe for you, it's three in the afternoon. Maybe for you, it's driving by the donut shop in the morning. And you know, it's it's not great to do that every single day, right? I swapped out my drink for something else. And I'll be super honest. Those first couple months of sobriety was ice cream because I needed to get through this major, major change that something I'd broken through after 15 years. But then I started figuring out how can I swap something healthier? So if maybe what I wanted you to do after this call is maybe have the courage to, to write down some of those habits that you know aren't serving you. And instead of thinking, I need to stop this right now, because I just don't know if that's realistic. I had nudges for years until I was ready to make a decision like that was that great in my life. But maybe that the habits that you write down that you know aren't serving you, maybe you just start to swap it every once in a while, right? So maybe it is dessert. And maybe at night when you're like, man, I'm really craving this big bowl of ice cream every single night, which I love ice cream. I still have it. I just don't have it every night anymore. Maybe you have a different swap. So with our company, we have a superfood shake and I will most evenings, I will make up a little healthy mug cake. And that's my swap for the evening. And you know what? It gets me through that time, even though I don't crave drinking anymore, which I'm so grateful for. It, got, it gets me through the time when I had such a habit ingrained in me. Okay. So number tip number one was habit swapping and I will check the chat too, but I'm on a roll. So I kind of get squirrel brain. So journal, what I would encourage you to after this call is journal those habits that aren't serving you and think about something you could swap for it. Right. Just think about that. Is there something healthier that you could swap for around the time that you crave that tip number two is this is a book that I read when I first started my business journey with helping other people. And the concept is called eat that frog which sounds really funny. The book is by Brian Tracy, if you're curious, but it means do the thing you are most likely to skip first thing. 
And I know for some of you are like, I can't work out like you do at 5.30, Ashley, you're crazy. Let me just tell you that I thought I was crazy because I didn't do these early morning workouts until about three years ago. And remember, I've been in this business for 10 years. But I'm saying maybe it's not super early morning workouts, but maybe that thing that like the person that you know you need to call or the thing you need to do. And I'm talking about this because health is not just physical. Health is emotional, mental, all the things. What if you did it before the day took you over? Right. What if you did the thing that you were going to put off? Because I don't know about you, but at this time of night after this call, I love you guys. I'm unplugging and I'm reading my book and I'm going to bed. <laughs> right. I'm, if I leave things for the nighttime and maybe that's not you, but for me, it would not get done. But also, even if you are a night owl, what if you had a win early in the morning? And let me give you the simplest win that you can do. And I'll go over these tips in just a second. I'll recap them for you. What if when you first woke up, you didn't check social media? What if when you first rolled out of bed, you didn't turn on the news? What if you took five minutes and you did something proactive for yourself instead of consuming and being reactive? So for me, it is a workout. I get up and I work out. I walk to my garage with my husband. We work out before our young children wake up. That's our life right now. Maybe we won't always have to wake up this early, but we have kids that are two and six and we do right now. And then I set my timer for five minutes. I use the app Insight Timer and I meditate. And if you guys were in our community last month in mine, we went through a masterclass about meditation this month, actually. And meditation is not so scary. And it's a great chance to kind of reset your breath. And then I write out on my, I can't really show. Oh, can I show you? Yeah. I got this journal at five below. It's called This Year Will Be. And I'm like 42 weeks into it. And I write down an intention for the day and what I'm grateful for. All before I check the news, I don't check the news, but all before I check my social media right? I eat that frog. I do the thing that's going to set me up for more success because I don't know what's coming down the pike during my day. Kids are going to need me. I'm going to be pulled in a hundred different directions, but I took care of the morning. Let me know if any of this is resonating with you guys. I have two more tips, two millimeter shifts. Think about that for a second. I think that sometimes we think changing our life are these monumental moments. And I'm not saying those don't happen. Certainly I, I had a monumental moment when I decided to become sober. And I will always remember that. But do you know what led me to that? Little nudges, little nudges over the years, little, little things and universe signs of who I would meet and things that I would hear. They were little shifts in my life that was leading me up to a, a really big decision. Similarly, try not to think of living your healthiest life as waking up tomorrow and doing it all different because that's not sustainable. But what if you reached out for help in some area that you knew you needed more accountability? What if you did something tomorrow that you haven't done before, right? What if you tried it out? What if you celebrated the fact that you didn't have dessert tonight, like you do every single night, but you had a healthier option or a hot tea and you went to bed, right? I'm not saying when you do something once you have to do it forever, but I am saying that if you try on different two millimeter shifts in your life, some of them are going to stick and some of them are ultimately going to change your life. And then the last tip I have for you guys is get yourself in the room with people who lift you up. Now that can be in person or that can be in the world we live in virtually. Like Natalie and I were talking about, we not only are on our health journey because of who we want to become for ourselves and our loved ones, but paying it forward. Like you guys, I don't share on social media because I love seeing myself. I don't. <laughs> I share my journey because it's insurance that I'm never going to not take care of myself. And I've been blessed to help thousands of people over 10 years, not being a professional group fitness instructor anymore, but simply connecting people with solutions I know work and encouraging them. The best way that you can ensure that you're not going to quit on yourself is by literally bringing someone along the journey with you. Even if they don't run the entire race with you, even if they're here for a little bit of time, Someone else is going to come, right? Think about just going, doing those laps. Someone's going to be with you for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. And the best thing you could possibly do to ensure that you're not going to get too busy for your health is grab someone to come with you. And not only that, getting yourself in a room of people, like we have a team. We have a team. Natalie has a team. I have a team of people whose mission it is to never quit on their journey, but to help other people along the way. And if something inside you is like, I don't know if I could ever do that, but that sounds inspiring and I never want to quit on myself. It's worth having a conversation with the person that invited you to this call tonight. Okay. 
And think about this. Um, I'm going to mess up this Tony Robbins quote, but it is um, a healthy man has a thousand wishes. A dying man has just one, right? We all want to be healthy. Health is all that we have. When we're healthy, we can thrive and we can have options in life. I want each one of you to have a lifetime with the people that you love as many years as you can get. And I don't think there's anything better than helping us on a mission to never deprioritize our health, but to help other people. So if you're in our communities, that's amazing. If you want to take the next step and link arms with us and talk about how we could help help more people, then please reach out to us too. And then lastly, you guys, thank you so much for having me share. Um, we're going to end with our special guest. She is a partner on my team. Her name is Laura Stevens. She has been around for a long time. We've known each other since I used to teach yoga at the same studio where Laura did back when I was living in Virginia. And she has partnered with us. She's been a long time believer in these products and programs, but just the last few months, she has partnered with us to create more alignment with her purpose and also to help financially for her family. So we just have three questions for Laura. If you can please welcome Laura in the chat. Laura, I see you are good. You should be unmuted. Yes. All right. <laughs> Tell can you us. hear me? Okay. I can't. I can't. And this is a special Yay. time. She has a son whose awesome. bedtime it is. So she's missing bedtime for this call. So please <laughs> thank her for her time. But Laura, I just want to jump in with the first, I have three questions for you. And first off, welcome. And I just was yeah. wondering if you could tell us a little bit about your health journey before joining this community. Yeah, I think so. As Ashley said, I've been a long time fitness professional. Um, I first joined body years ago, but, um, at that time I was, I was doing personal training and meal planning for, um, aspiring bodybuilders, mainly in the vegan community. So I, I know a lot about nutrition, but I've had a lot of difficulty with consistency in my nutrition for the long haul. Um, workouts haven't been as much of a challenge, but I'm definitely more consistent now. And I'm finding, I was talking to Ashley earlier, like I, I got kind of in a slump about cooking when I had my son, it's been six years. And just more recently over the summer, I've started cooking again and loving it and eating even healthier for it. Um, another big part is just consistency in this community. Being a leader is hard. And I've been a leader in my fitness career. And it, 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 there's a lot of weight, even though it's an amazing opportunity and it feels good to help other people. But I also know that I have others that I can rely on every day when I can't bring all the energy myself and when I'm not feeling my best. So I don't always have to be the strong one. I don't always have to be the motivator. And I have other people here to lift me up when I'm feeling weak, which happens. Um, another big thing was um, just struggling to build a business from scratch. Like, wanting to be in health and fitness, but not really knowing how to show people my value or what to do or what to put together. And this has kind of given me a structure that is easy to work within. And it's, it's offered me so many other opportunities to just reach more people. I, the last thing too, my mindset was kind of like before with body, I guess mindset, I was approaching fitness from like a different place. I think a long time ago, it was more superficial and now I've learned like how important it is for me wholly, like emotionally, um, spiritually, just like feeling good internally and not all about the way that I looked. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I, I love that you said whole heart, like it's the well-rounded wellness, because like, again, we come from yeah. some backgrounds of really leading with the physical, right. And like pushing through yep. not sitting with our emotions, but just, we kind of have this in us of just get it done. Just, just do it. And you actually stepping back and taking kind of a bird's eye view of how do I actually feel right now? What would serve me today in this moment? You know, that is health and that's wellness just as much as lifting weights and jumping around and, or doing a yoga class is. So I love that. Um, okay. So if people don't know kind of the timeline of this, you have been yoga teaching, you're also a meditation coach and you started a while ago with us to work out at home and have that extra accountability, not just to fitness, but to nutrition and mindset. And a couple months ago, you decided that you wanted to help other people too, like outside of the yoga studio, but with these products and programs that you love, take that to the next level and be able to help other people with that as well. So when you started and you really wanted to help people on this larger scale, 
I'm wondering like in terms of purpose and your life, what has that meant to you in terms of your life and your purpose to be able to help more people outside of the yoga studio or, you know, more people in general get connected to health and wellness and community? Yeah, um, that's a really big question. And basically I've kind of said some of this in so many ways, but helping people believe in themselves and feel better, like healing their bodies, their minds, hearts. That's, that is what I'm here to do. And I feel it every time I have a conversation with someone about their goals and their struggles. I feel it every time I teach a meditation. I feel it every time I step into the practice room. It's rooted so deeply within me. <clears throat> Sorry about my voice, you guys. That's also from talking and teaching a lot. Um, it's rooted so deeply within me in those moments. And I can feel that flame bur burning so brightly in my heart. And body's been this amazing vehicle that's allowing me not only to be my happiest, healthiest, and most consistent, but also to fuel my passion and my purpose on a much grander level, because I can connect with people everywhere and I can offer them lots of value for low cost, nutritionally, physically, mentally, and emotionally, and expand my reach in a way that I'm just not able to at my studio as much as I love it. Or, you know, even in my corporate career, I'm, I'm a, I'm in the legal field, but I teach mindfulness and meditation at my company as well, but it's confined to those four walls. And that, that vehicle that body's provided, that's priceless. And I'm, I'm so grateful to be able to help people on such a bigger level. Love that. And did we mention you were also a personal yeah. trainer? Did you mention that? Yeah, I, so yeah, I, I'm a certified personal trainer, um, an experienced yoga teacher with thousands of hours under my belt and also a, a continuing education provider. So yes. And I love that because as we go into our last question here, like you are a fitness professional, you know, we, and as a side yeah. note, you do not have to be a fitness professional to help people, but you are someone that comes from this professional world. And I think you remember last week we were on the phone and you were like, I don't know why people have personal trainers. She's like, I'm a personal trainer. And I don't even know why people pay for personal trainers. Like the, the community we have here with body is top notch to be able to have all of this at our fingertips, but also to have a community of people that are continuously uplifting and supporting you. So to hear that coming from someone who literally worked in the field, um, to be able to have this incredible resource at home and to leverage that to help people, I think is really telling. So lastly, you know, you really got started in July of starting to share your story starting to put yourself out there. And I would say too, like, even though you're confident, you've, you weren't, no one's quite sure what they're doing when they decide they want to like make this a purpose and go help people. Like you're new and you had to learn too, but you've had some really great success these last few months. You helped over eight people in August. You've already helped three people get started in September. And with that comes with financial compensation from linking arms and helping other people. So in terms of a financial standpoint of putting yourself out there to help more people, how has the, this impacted your life and your family financially over the last few months? I mean, it's definitely made a significant financial impact um, in, in this short period of time. Just like many, my husband has a lot of student loans. We haven't been paying them for three years now, basically. And his loan payments are resuming in October. And it's basically like an expensive car payment. And I made more than enough in September to cover it for October. So that's my plan at the minimum going forward. Um, and it's so helpful because if it, we didn't have body, I'd have this whole other new car payment on the same income that's not going to move much. I mean, I'll, I might get a raise in my other job in January, but it's not going to be like enough to cover that. So that's super helpful. I love that. And but just so legal, if yeah. legal is watching this body can't guarantee any yeah. level of success or income. It's all based on our diligence and skill. But something that you did was you saw an opportunity with products and programs that you loved to be able to help other people. I know your sister-in-law is on this call, like help your family, help your friends, help people regardless of where they live, because our company is global. And to be able to have that opportunity has also helped you financially. Now it's not easy. You have a full-time job, you have a son, you, you're, you're married, you're very strategic with time management, but the beauty of helping other people is you do this in the pockets of your day. And it's even more accountability of this well-rounded health and wellness 
when you do not have to be perfect, but you're kind of standing on this ledge, like pulling other people up with you, you know, you're not just going to up and quit on yourself. And I'll say this forever, but my team, those women that, or men that are leaning in with me and helping other people, they're the most consistent people in their own health journey that I've ever met. Right. So I want someone to maybe, you know, take a look at our community and say, you know what, I love the products and programs. What if I could help someone else? Because that's truly where their line in the sand is drawn and they're not quitting on their health. And I think that's the beauty. Laura, um, thank you so much. We're going to wrap up here in just a minute, but is there anything else that you wanted to add before we close this out? If you're curious, like Ashley said, just reach out to the person who invited you because it could open a lot of doors for you and your family and your life. I mean, it, it's, it is awesome and you will be far more accountable. I don't know. I could talk about this forever, but I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I love that. Can you guys please help me congratulate Laura for sharing her story? This is like, and over thir- 35 people on this call. That's amazing. I know she's prepping for a big presentation at her work next month, but like to be able to, it's, a lot to speak to people on a call. I've been doing this for so many years and I'm still like, oh my gosh. So you did absolutely incredible. Um, I just want to close out. I'm going to end the recording here. So hang tight, just hang on for just a second. We want to get a picture.